Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan. With me, as always, is a man named Logan. How are you, Logan? I'm frozen. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, got you. I was going to say, I am like, for some reason, when I turn on this laptop lately, it like gives me a good 20 minutes of just not working. So um, it's funny, though, because you you weren't actually frozen when I when you were talking. That's so weird. So, like I can see you move. You can? You can see me yeah. moving? Oh, yeah. Well then, all right. Well, <laughs> the, I don't need to actually move on my screen. Um, but no, it's good, Jordan. I'm I'm doing well, Mr. Wigan. I'm doing well. Uh, yeah, so we look, match day 10. All right, we're almost a third of the way through the season, right? Because there's, what, 34 games? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're close. We're close to a third of the way through the season. We'll take a look at the standing and see where everybody is currently. We'll uh, uh, talk about the matches that just happened. We also just, I guess, briefly at the top here, let's just talk U.S. Men's National Team stuff. We got news that Sergino Dest is, is probably out for nine months. Uh, so it looks like he's going to miss Copa America. Um, and it might affect his uh, full transfer uh, to PSV. Uh, from Barcelona. So that that really sucks, but I just wanted to get that uh, at the top of the show. Uh, it's always something with this team. Uh, any team has injuries, but I'm just saying, like, uh, unfortunately, it feels like we'll never see this team at, at, at full strength. Yeah, no, it's too bad. And he played really well uh, because he, you know, he's he struggled with injuries. Geo struggled with injuries. Tyler Adams has struggled with injuries list goes on and on, but I feel like those three are the constant Tyler Adams at this point, And then Gino or Gino just put their names together. Uh, Gio and Sergio Dest. Um, I feel like Dest is constantly hurt though. Like I can't remember a season or a camp where he's not missed at least, you know, once every year. So it gives other guys chances. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens, but we'll be missing one of the best playmakers from that, that right hand side that he plays. So, yeah, so uh, Haji Wright scored a penalty uh, to tie Manchester United in the FA Cup semifinals. So for all those people that were like, why were you guys talking about Haji Wright on your State of the Union strikers? He's playing pretty well for Coventry. So, so that's why. Unfortunately, they deemed him offside because his toenail was offside. And this is the most insane thing about about offsides was it technically offsides yes is there any advantage gained from that no there isn't because his his toe it may not even been his toe you know sometimes if you wear shoes it's like just like the the part that sticks out more you know could have been offside like insane. you and i have talked about it too like almost going to Airing with common sense as to like this did not give this person an advantage to, to the goal. You know, like yeah. unless it's significant, it's really hard, I think, for like I hate the arms. And people are always like, well, that's momentum shifting forward. I'm like, yeah, but like if his arms are like past, I mean, it, it, it's just an elbow, what, what's he really gained by that? Well, usually elbows shouldn't be marking them offside because uh, where they'll usually stop is here. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because yeah, you can technically shoulder, shoulder, shoulder the ball into yeah. the back of the net. But, yeah, there's still no advantage from that. If he doesn't score with his shoulder, it's like, all right, whatever. Right? I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I don't know. Just frustrating with it. But uh, It stopped a very great story as Coventry would have would have won the game in, in extra time. But they had to go to penalties. And they lost. And now Manchester United gets to face off against City and lose in the final. All right, new rules in the match. These have taken effect like this week. We have, uh, or this week or the last week, off-field treatment rule allows medical professionals with time to assess and treat players off the field of play in a less pressurized environment. So if a player with a suspected injury remains on the ground for more than 15 seconds, the referee will stop play and wave the crew onto the field to evaluate when safe, the player will be removed and remain off the field for a minimum of two, two minutes to further assess the treatment. 
This is to try to stop people from just lying on the floor when they're not actually hurt. Because now, if you're hurt, if you're not actually hurt, 15 seconds, and you're on the floor, guess what? The medical crew has to come on and take you off the field for two minutes minimum. And your team's going to be down a man during that time. That's not going to be good. So get up if you're not actually hurt. Uh, Timed substitution rule requires that a substituted player exit the field within 10 seconds. Failure to exit from any point in the field within 10 seconds will cause the incoming player to wait for a 30 uh, for a 60 second holding period before entering the game at the next stoppage. Um, the team will be down a player during that time. And uh, this was enacted in MLS Next Pro last year, and 99.7% of the substitutions, which were 3,200 subs, were completed in 10 seconds or less. So just 0.3 that had to deal with that. That's great. In stadium VAR announcements, VAR decisions will be explained and announced by the referee to fans in the stadium and the broadcast viewers at home. Uh, what do we make of these rules? Well, could get to me there. Um, I, I, I really like them. I think it. There's a big emphasis on American sports, especially, uh, and this is across the board. Uh, I know NHL has had issues with people getting on and off the ice at times. Um, the NBA uh, has gone to more of a strict get the ball, get it out of bounds kind of rule. Um, quicker, I think there's quicker timeouts. Um, there's uh, more of a significant push towards uh, obviously pitch count and like pitch uh, awareness, pitch clock um, and that kind of stuff with MLB and then also coming back from breaks. Um, so I, it, it's interesting to me because MLS is, is now getting on board. And I, I think because the U.S. is so new and it's fandom of, of football and soccer, I think there's a lot of uh, – there's a lot of casuals that say it too, um, that too much time is spent of these players on, on the pitch rolling around. So um, if they're not actually hurt, get up. Uh, I get it. It's, it's kind of part of that, that – uh, I guess competitiveness that goes along with soccer where you're trying to get and sell a foul, but uh, I think it's become too much for MLS and two minutes short. I mean, that's really significant um, to, to get a guy off the pitch for two minutes that, I mean, you could change a game. Um, and we saw that uh, we saw the first bit of that um, this weekend. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays going forward. But again, if 99.7% of MLS is next, uh, does it then um i'm not sure that mls is gonna have much of an issue following along the same rules yeah uh this was um th th this sounds great right now my main th concern is the refs just holding them to this so it seems like they were used to it mls next pro so hopefully they do but not even for that one, but even for the 15 second thing. And the reason I say that is because goalkeepers are literally only supposed to hold the ball for six seconds. Right. Uh, and sometimes uh, goalkeepers get away with a little bit more time than that. So it is going to probably still be up to the discretion of the ref. And I hope that they stick, stick to this stuff. Like actually if it's 15 seconds, warn them at second 10, and be like, you got five seconds or else you're you're out of here, you know, type of thing. Uh, and with the sub thing, if it's 10 seconds, warn them after five, like, exit as soon as you can here because you're about to go down a man. Like, you know, don't warn them at 10 seconds. Warn them when you're, you know, to give them enough time to get off in the, in the time. But, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that helps. In-stadium VAR announcements, huge to be able to understand what's going on. I don't know how many times I've been at a game – and I have to end up scrolling on Twitter to be like, all right, so what? what's the TV crew saying? <laughs> what, yeah. what are they saying here? Um, and, uh, you know, baseball has started doing this uh, where they announce it to the crowd. Um, basketball does it now. Basketball, yeah. <laughs> so I've been to a basketball game, my first NBA game earlier this year, and it's in Philly of all places, right? And, uh, man, the, the way that the refs have to do it too – they have to like look into a camera and it puts it on the screen and it t shows the television. And it was a call. It went against the Sixers and oh my God, did that place 
like a rough. <laughs> <Yeah. with, "Aah!" laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't hear what they're saying though. That was the bad thing about it. Um we finally kind of started understanding what the signs mean. Usually it seems like anytime they do the box, they mean the changes, it, the, the play is changing, right? Um, and then you know what offsides is, you know what that is. But sometimes there's confusion on like, what if it doesn't fall under one of those easily explained things? Red yes, cards definitely don't. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and I wonder, I guess they're not deciding, they're not saying everything, it'd just be a VAR thing. So I guess maybe if they give the red card and they decide not to, they come back and be like, we deemed after a review that it wasn't actually dangerous or something. Like, I don't know what they yeah, would it say. Happened in, uh, it happened in the Seattle game this weekend. Um, he came on and he said it was, what is it, endangerment to the player? Um, mm-hmm, yeah. Which, I mean, ultimately that's what a red card is. But it is, it's at least explaining, like, it's endangerment to the player. Here's why he's being sent off, because... And again, you have that in a lot of, and sometimes you miss things. Like sometimes you miss, um, because this was middle of the pitch and it was kind of hard to see uh, probably from other viewpoints of the stadium. But there's times, Jordan, where off the off the ball things happen and you're going, what happened? Like, so at least some kind of explanation to it. Um, people are like, well, that's, that's, it's obvious. I'm like, well, sometimes it's not to, to the fan um, that isn't maybe paying attention at the time or if it's off ball. Uh, yeah. All right. I think we can dive into the games. Uh, <laughs> we had a great derby between Sporting Kansas City and St. Louis. This is a rematch of the playoffs. The the, the first round where we had three legs of this. Uh, high scoring affairs. This was Sporting. your game of the week, wasn't it? I believe I said that. I don't yeah. even remember. The weeks There's, go by so fast. I, I think this was yours because then you did honorable mention was the Red Bull LAFC game. Yes. Okay. So I was right. This one. <laughs> three, it was three. really good. It was good. It was really good. Uh, okay. 3-3 three, three finish. This was... At one point, you had Sporting in the lead. At some point, you had St. Louis in the lead, right? Like They flipped flop a few times. But 77th minute, it's a, a 3-2 lead for Sporting Kansas City. They cough it up in stoppage time. Logan, 14 points out of winning positions. 14, this season, 14 points out of winning positions. You know how many points that Sporting has? 11. Yeah. You know, if they had 14 14. more points, they would be the best team in the league. 25 (laughs) points. That's insane. That's incredible. How is that true? I mean, I just don't, like, how many, they had to have lead in every single game. Yeah, because if you have a lead, Jordan, you, if you lose and you had the lead, you drop. You drop points. You, yeah. You drop. You drop, you drop three. Three. Yeah. And then if, if you, you're tied. Yeah. You drop. Yeah. Like you if, drop two. Right. Yeah. So it, it it's amazing to me. Like, but it would be winning position. So all, you 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 quickly catch up. It had to, to be every game. Yeah. Right. I mean, fourteen yeah, more point. points. Yeah. What is yeah. that? Fourteen times three would be five games, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, one of those becoming a draw, I guess, right. and the rest being wins. But like five games. Uh, they've only played nine. Yep. <laughs> they have five. They have five draws. They have two losses. So, uh, okay, yeah. So probably two losses, or the yeah. five draws, and three draw. Uh, so either two losses, two dra- uh, three draws. <laughs> this or... is a lot of math. <laughs> it is. I'm not good at math. All right. It's the reason I became a history major. Me either. It's not to but take sorry. anymore. The fact nah. that they've lost 14. I mean, so my question is to you, I guess, is from last year, right? They, they went on this incredible run and actually bounced St. Louis, um, the number one seed from the playoffs. They started out abysmally. I think it was the first 10 matches that they didn't pick up a win. Um, do you do you take last year's second half or do you take the fact that it, they were, you know, it's kind of like that's the expectation or do you, do you now take – you know, this idea that, you know, they might be like this first half team that we saw. They just can't hold leads this time. Like, it, it feels, it's hard to explain. Like, it, it's hard to, like, wrap my head around what's going on with St. Louis, or sorry, SKC. Well, let me tell you, to wrap your head around it, they're, they're losing points. <laughs> yeah, 14 of them, too. 
I just uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of SKC. I, I do think that they're better than they were last year, but they're look. They're definitely in a better position this year than they are than they were last That's year true. at this time. So it's like they have less ground to make up. They've got one point off of a playoff spot, one, and they're only seven points off the first uh, place in the West. So again, if if just a few more results go their way out of those 14 points, not even all 14, just a few of those, they'd be in the top four of the West. Um, it does say something about maybe their mentality of not being able to close out games. But this is fixable. Didn't the crew, the crew led that last year, didn't they? Yeah, the they? crew were really good at this. Yeah, they were the they top were giving, team up. giving up goals in the last like 75 minutes or sorry yeah, from 75 minutes. on from right is, on, is yeah. what it was uh that they would be giving up goals and they would lose they would lose points they'd be in winning positions as well they were able to correct it in time to make a great run in the playoffs can sporting do that yeah i think last year shows that vermice can get this drilled into his men they can get out there in the playoffs and, and turn around but they got to do it sooner than they did last year. And I think that they have to look at this and be like, what are we doing? Why are we dropping points uh, constantly? Uh, that's frustrating. It's got to be frustrating if you're a sporting Kansas City fan. Um, they've been a very mixed bag, right? I felt like they kind of started off better this year. And then they've had this period where they were kind of stalling. And then they kind of picked up again. And now they're... Yeah, it is what it is. But credit to St. Louis as well for uh, for for coming back and, and equalizing. They've been on a little bit of a disappointment from last year. Maybe a lot of disappointment. I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on St. Louis? Nobody thought they would be top of the West last year. This just feels like more that they're regressing to probably what they are uh, and not some historic team that they that they were last year. And I think there were there was some concern coming in, obviously, that they were going to be able to duplicate a lot of what they did last year. I think losing Stroud is, is a big deal for them because he is creating um, elsewhere. And, and I think that ultimately that's, you know, kind of the piece that's that's really missing is that this team at times goes stagnant. Um, they're like, well, we scored three goals against Sporting Kansas City. But when you do that, you've also got to defend. So it's, it, you know, I think either way that it goes, um, St. Louis is – they're either conceding or giving up or they're, they're scoring goals, but they're conceding goals too. Um, to give up 14 goals and to have that negative or sorry, that positive one goal differential um, they've scored 15 this year. I think that's where you're going to have some difficulty in, in progressing through uh, the Western conference. Now you look at LA galaxy who give up 15 goals um, who are above them and are in first place in the Western conference. They've also scored 21. So while LA galaxy can't defend, they're going to score in bunches, kind of like what that LAFC team um, was a few years back. And and I think ultimately, if you have a, a star-studded attacking front, um, and I think St. Louis could get there eventually, but I'm not sure that they've really got that where they can they can ship goals all the time and expect to come out of these games, especially on the road, um, with three points. Um, and you know they've not been as tough um, to to face uh, when you when you talk about the home record. So. Uh, it, it is. It's interesting to kind of see what St. Louis is this year because I think you're getting more of the reality, kind of like what Austin, honestly, Jordan, I think it's a comparable situation, um, which isn't good for St. Louis uh, because of how abysmal Austin has been. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But again, they're not going to be able, they're not going to be one of these teams, Jordan, that go out and spend a ton. They're not going to be one of these teams that are flashy that people are going to go, I want to go to St. Louis. So they're going to have to build this from youth. And, and right now, I, I really. I struggle to find somebody that's going to really lead this team. Uh, they don't have that. I mean, Roman Berkey's the closest thing. They have a star, and and he's not been as good as he was last year. So we'll see. Um, How but, about that play by Klaus, though? Uh, yeah. That was, shoulder. <laughs> he, he, Love it. He, it was uh, incredible strength. Um, it, yeah. Was it, uh, <laughs> was it Willie Agata? I forget who it was. Um, uh, I forget. Kind of barreled, um, but – Gosh, to to take down whoever I forget whoever it was, but they were they're strong as well. Um, but yeah, he just manhandled them, took the ball straight out of the out of the pocket, and took off with it. Yeah, back to KC real quick. They're just winless in five of six games at home, uh, in which they've jumped out to a one nil lead. Um, so that's part of the drop points, but that's five of six at home. 
they got to get that sorted. Cincinnati get a huge win in Atlanta, especially after they fell behind Atlanta. 1-0 lead by a gorgeous strike from Almada. But it all kind of unraveled from there when you have a 60-second corner kick in which uh, Atlanta doesn't touch this ball at all. This corner gets intercepted, and then uh, they are off to the races. Um, uh, Acosta on the breakaway, passing it to Luca, who puts it in to the goal. And then two minutes later, Cincinnati taking the lead with uh, Yedlin on the right wing, playing across in the box where um, Acosta will score. Yeah, so uh, this is huge for Cincinnati, in my opinion, because they'd kind of stagnated a bit, right? Last week was a, a down week for them. They're back, though. They got 15 points out of nine. Um, they're on pace with Miami. Miami has 18 points after 10. So they're on that pace. Uh, they're just lagging behind Red Bulls right now. We have 16 points out of nine games. But uh, they're definitely still in the running for that top Eastern spot. It's going to be a grind between these teams. We'll see how it goes. Like Philly still has only seven games played <laughs> compared to these teams that have nine and 10. So a uh, very interesting Eastern conference right now, Atlanta, they were the home team. They had the lead and the disappointing on Atlanta's uh, side of things. Um, what about your thoughts? Uh, which, which one, uh, wherever you want to start with Cincy or Atlanta. Yeah, I'll start with Atlanta. I, I think, and I, and I talked about this in our preview of our game of the week last week. I, I thought this was a really good chance for Atlanta to prove uh, at home and in, in the comfort of Mercedes Benz, where they play well, typically, um, to, to kind of put a, a statement out there. They need a statement win. Uh, they need a win that's convincing that they're bashing in some of these good teams in the Eastern Conference. And they, they just seem to fall short every time that they get this opportunity. A lot of people point to Yakamaki's being out and obviously a, an MVP caliber player in this league, but you got to be able to do it uh, against a, a Cincinnati team that I don't think is as good as last year. They've had trouble scoring Jordan and Atlanta gifted them two goals. Uh, the second one was absolutely awful um, to find Lucio Acosta where they found him in between two Atlanta defenders. And he just, <laughs> he's not big. So it's like the fact that the ball got into him, um, on that cross from Yedlin was kind of amazing. And then the, miraculously, um, the Atlanta defenders had no idea that he was there, it seemed. And uh, again, they, they they gifted a goal to uh, the reigning MVP. So it, it, Atlanta's constantly doing things to shoot themselves in the foot. And I feel like that's the that's the story for this team. That's the narrative for this team. And I think it, it doesn't change under Gonzalo Pineda. Uh, I think Garth is putting together quite a good team. I think that this team's got a lot of potential. They always tend to have a great youth academy that comes through. they got some really great young players, and they've got one of the best players in this league. Um, sorry, two of the best players in this league. I always forget that Almada's there still. Um, but, you know, that might change in the summer. And if Almada leaves, Jordan, this team could could find some uh, could find some bottom of the Eastern Conference here because I, I, I do. I, I really do worry that if Yakimakis and Almada aren't leading this front, that there, there's going to be some – some hesitancy and some, I, I guess, um, caution that I'll put on putting any kind of confidence in behind Atlanta because they just, they, they, they're they they're right there, but they just seem to be missing something. I don't know if I can go that far, but the, for me, like for Atlanta, like they're 11 points out of eight games, um, positive goal differential, which is a good, a good sign. They're, you know, a one win away from being in that top four along with Columbus and stuff. But like you said, if Almada leaves, they're gonna need a they're gonna need an answer there. And then you have the the other issue of is Pineda good enough to to lead this team as a coach? And I, I think we're finding maybe not, maybe not. And that'll be a decision, I guess, for Garth Lagerway uh, or whoever would make that decision. Um, maybe at the end of the season, or maybe in the middle of the season, we'll see. Because they got the money too. I mean, that's 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 yeah, one thing that this team money. right. So they, they'll write a blank check. I mean, and, and that'll be for anybody that they want. It's just a matter of I don't know. Well, just... uh, will he write our name? Maybe. I mean, if we got a blank space, baby, are we singing? <laughs> 
Oh man, the tortured podcast society. Yes, yeah, so oh, we've had uh, on all of our podcasts. We've been making some Taylor ball Swift or thing. Taylor Swift references. We have. <laughs> Uh, Vancouver, huge win against Seattle to nil. Uh, Vancouver topping the first place in the Western Conference again. Um, Seattle go down to 10 men in the 43rd minute when uh, with Jackson Reagan stepping on the back of Ryan Gold's calf. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, right? I mean, Alex Roldan gets a second <laughs> was awful. card yeah. of the match on a studs up challenge in the yeah. 75th minute. Frustration completely. Crylock comes on, almost makes it three, right? Like three goals, not three red cards. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's picking up um, red cards for Seattle. Third straight road win for Vancouver. Yeah. That's, that's pretty great. Um, this is a, a great story. You've been on the Vancouver bandwagon. Uh, the last few years. They're finally showing the promise. They have eight games played. They're two points behind Galaxy, but they have a game in hand compared to Galaxy. So they can still leapfrog the first. Um, but this top four of the West is not what we were thinking, right? We got LA, no. Vancouver, Salt Lake, Colorado. Colorado started off poor. They're now in the top four, man. But yeah, Vancouver just getting it done. Um, 17 goal score, nine against. They have a positive eight goal differential. Stuff we're not accustomed to when it comes to the Vancouver Whitecaps. They and on the other side of it, games. we're not used to Seattle being this poor either. That's right? true. Uh, zero goal differential, six six points after eight games. That to me, I think, is a lot of injuries. Uh, you know, losing your your, your main signing. Uh, De La Vega really was a huge blow. And um, look, kind of happy the Union are playing them this month. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> On the 30th. Yeah. Especially because oh. they, what, are they over here? Like, are they over here for some reason? And then they say, yeah, they'll or... play DC, I think, the weekend before. Okay. Uh, it's still kind of like, oh, why would you, I guess you'll stay over here. DC is a huge question mark as well. They, they've they've been wild this year, so we'll see yeah. what DC shows up. But, uh, but yeah, so Whitecaps doing pretty good. Uh, your thoughts on Seattle? I guess what, what they're uh, doing? like, <laughs> man, they uh, not good. Uh, sitting twelfth in the Western Conference, they've got six points. Jordan, I feel like we do this all the time now with Seattle, which uh, should become a concern. But again, you, and you and I have talked about this a, a ton. Every time we preview them, we're like, the shoe's going to drop. You know, Father Time's going to catch up to this team. And when it does, it, it's going to have to be blown up. And I mean, De La Vega's going to come back. And I'm not sure he does as much for this team. Um, just because I, I think there's just so many surrounding pieces that I'd have concerns with. Rui, De, 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 sorry, Rui Diaz is at the end of his, his time there. Um, you've got Jordan Morris, who, uh, while a good player, is never going to reach that Jordan Morris hype that we saw when he was MVP. Um, you know, I, I, I do. I feel like Seattle Jordan is just kind of circling the drain, and there's really not much they can do except add some younger players and hope that that works. But right now, they're just not uh, they're not clicking at all. Um, they don't defend um, as well as, or sorry, they, sorry, they don't score as well as they should. They do defend, um, but yeah, I, in this league, you, you've got to be able to score goals and. Everybody else above them. I mean, the Western Conference is loaded with goal-scoring teams. So, uh, I guess may the force be with Seattle, but I don't see it very. Uh, I see them in a, kind of fighting for those play-in uh, games, those playoff games now, or the sorry, the eight and nine spots. Yeah, honestly, I don't know if I can even see them doing that at this point. Mm-hmm. I, I've been very lenient on them at this point. We're almost a third of the way through, and they sit. It was six points. It's not even a point per match. And they need to get another six just to get to where St. Louis and Austin are right now. They need to turn it on. That Look, the five goals that they scored last week is more than half of the goals they've scored. They, they need to get it in gear, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I think... I think they're toast at this point. If I'm going to call it right now, Seattle, Dallas, and San Jose are not factoring into the playoff race at all. 
Write it down. Uh, you want me to? I'll yeah, write it down. Mark it down. Mark it down. I think you're right. Like I, I, I Seattle's the one that that could. All they've got to do is is win a game, and I think they get back into it because um, they've got right, a game. So hold hand. on. Prediction four twenty two. I'm writing this down right here. It's going to be at the bottom of our notes, so don't delete this. We'll do that. We'll just keep our predictions crazy at the predictions. Bottom. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, I can already tell you San Jose is not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> we can make one of those eliminated graphics with black and white. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is they're not going to get eliminated until the last three weeks of the season because of the yeah. math. <laughs> but yeah. they're done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you have playoff tickets for San Jose, you won't sell them. <laughs> Oh Hopefully boy! And look, works. this is look. No shade to any of the fans of those teams. I, I just Dallas. I know Logan was high on Dallas this year. I was kind of high on them last year, and they let me down. So I was. I've been. Uh, yeah. You're ready to be. You're not you're, letting you're, me down again. Yeah, you were in the Dallas burn then. You were Dallas. Yeah. Empire. And now we have Seattle. I've been a fan of watching Seattle since they entered the league. They're fun. Their uniforms are great. Freddie Montero was one of my favorite players back then. They're just not doing it this year. And I know I always cite 2016 when they bring in Ladero and then they make the run and they win it all. I don't see them doing that this year. I don't, like maybe when De La Vega comes back, he is that spark they need it, but uh, they need more than that, I think, at, at this rate. Uh, I was hoping after the 5 0 victory last week, we'd see some sort of life but they got two red cards those players are not going to be able to play next <laughs> next week all right they're out they're not it's playing their best players too like that's yeah that's, that's... Two of their star players <laughs> yeah so of oh, course man. this will be when the union lose at home it's going to be against <laughs> seattle on the 30th <laughs> oh boy okay Let's move on from that matchup. Uh, we had uh, RSL obliterating Chicago. 4-0 loss at home. Chicho Arango scoring, what, two goals, two assists in this game. He's got eight goals, six assists through nine matches, putting him at the top of the golden boot race right now. Um, uh, he, he's just been unreal can't believe LAFC let him go to begin with. Uh, but I'm glad he's back in the league because he's he's a lot of fun to watch. Chicago, sorry, Andrew, what can I say? Uh, they're not very good. They're sitting in 13th place in the East. Nine points after nine games. They're averaging one point per match. But a negative seven goal differential. They just can't score. They can't defend. It feels like we do this every year with them, where we're like, oh, maybe they'll be a little sneaky this year. And it's like, no. <laughs> and I don't know why we keep asking that question going here. I don't mean us. I mean, like, the world will be like, I think Chicago maybe did enough. I don't know. We'll see. And then we watch them, and they certainly did not do enough. I think uh, they said on the, yeah. the wrap-up that Frank Clovis has the exact same record that Ezra Hendrickson had going into this stage of the year. So that's makes not sense. <laughs> they won't fire Clopas though, I bet. No. They'll fire fire. Uh they got booed, Jordan. Like they're gonna rebrand again. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, what do we do when we're losing? Uh grab another rebrand. They're gonna build a stadium too. Like their their plans are to build a stadium. So I wonder. I really do. I wonder because Soldier Field needs to needs to be updated, or at least they need to think about getting a new stadium. I know they were talking about it, but also the Fire want a new stadium, so I don't know who's who's going to win that one. But it sounds like the soccer stadium is a little bit more uh, on the on the verge of happening. But I don't know, man. Like this team is it's a wreck. This organization, like look at the big cities in this in this league, man. Like New York City and Chicago are embarrassing. Like. They just don't put together teams they should, and it's it's They're, ugly. The frustrating thing, right? And look, I'll say this as a Union fan, though. Like Philly doesn't act like a big market. They're a huge market in the U.S. They don't act like them. That's that's true. But you know, whatever, whatever, it's whatever, right? 
but when you have the other bigger markets like Chicago and New York that are bigger than Philly, it it's it's even worse. It's compounded even worse, I think, at, at that regard. I mean, the only market that acts like a big market is LA. Yeah. And only one team for a while there. Only one team for a while, yeah. Each side, yeah. right? Like before right. LA yeah. LFB was a thing, it was Galaxy doing it all. And then even when Chivas was there, Chivas wasn't bringing in the big stars the way the Galaxy were. And then LAFC were bringing them in, and now Galaxy is bringing them in and playing well. Uh, New York was Miami trying that. <laughs> Miami, yeah. Are they a big market? Yeah, they're massive. Yeah. Then okay. uh, I don't really Coast. know what what size you know yeah. let's look up the market sizes of of the u.s and let's see if they act like a big market this is our big topic of the episode um usa media market rankings all right um this is from 2021 so we'll see new york is the biggest la then chicago then philly then you have dallas they don't act like a big market San Francisco, which doesn't have a team. Atlanta, Houston, DC, and Boston. Those are the the top markets. Interesting. Let me see if I can find another ranking somewhere. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Where is Miami on this list? Because that's what I thought. I thought Miami was smaller than... They were okay. 18th, 18th okay, in the so U.S. Oh. with, but that's with Fort Lauderdale, which is where they're based. So I, yeah. I guess I counts. Uh, so it's above that estimation, though. Above like them: New York, L.A., Chicago, Philly, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Boston, D.C., San Francisco, Phoenix, Tampa, Seattle, Detroit, Minneapolis, Orlando, Denver. They have Orlando, but they have Orlando, Daytona Beach, Melbourne is what that is. <laughs> that's a, These are that's TV a really, Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. But, but yeah, no, I thought, I think desirable destinations, I guess, is more correct. Yeah, that's the thing. Everybody is always linked there because of the beaches. No tax and beaches. Yeah, warm weather, beautiful houses, more money. You get more brand deals. And a lot of the South American players like to go. So... You know, it, it's interesting. Um, but again, uh, I just, Chicago's just been an embarrassment. And I know they were good at some point because I remember when Bash and Schweinsteiger was there. And I remember, you know, there were teams before that that were, that were decent. But good is a, <laughs> as a loose term. They, had, they played like 12 teams, didn't they? <laughs> when, okay, when they were really good was yeah. their first year in 98 when they won it all. And that was it. <laughs> Like I mean, they, were, they were decent. With, they were decent with Feinsteiger, okay, but they weren't. Uh, they weren't like as probably good as you would think. Better than this, though. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, poor Andrew. Uh, last year they were thirteenth. Before that, they were twelfth. Twenty twenty one, they were. Uh, 12th, 2020, they were 11th, 2019, they were 8th in the conference. All right, there you go. It's looking a little better. They were 10th in 2018. They were 3rd in 2017. That's how far I had to go back to see the last time they were in the top four of the conference. So, yes, this is when they had uh, Dax McCarty, Mahalovic, Schweinsteiger, Janino, uh, Matt Polster. I mean, they had a really good – they actually had a really good team back then. <laughs> Brandon Vinson in defense, Michael Harrington. Uh, yeah, this was a – David Akam, Nikolic. Oh, that's right. That's when Nikolic was on the team. Yeah, they had a really good – team back then but it didn't it didn't really last what was it in 2016 10th 2015 10th which was last in the east at that point by the way ninth in the eastern conference in 2014 2013 they were six in the eastern conference 
fourth in the Eastern Conference in 2012. So you got to go where like there's like four year gaps where they're not even good. And then 2017, I said, was the last time they were top three. My God, that's that's seven years ago already. And they never do anything like they, they've had random players get really good. They always bring in retreads. Right. Yeah, exactly. coaches and players. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, no, no, all their player, all their coaches pretty much have co- coached at some point with other teams, and it's not gone well, which is why they're. I was mostly I referring that. to like when I was third, yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but yeah, Bruce Arena, bring him in. Yeah, talk about the re- ultimate retread. There. All right, so you had a question here about whose seat is hotter. I'll let I'll let you take control of this one. Yeah, so I want to get your thoughts on this, and and instead of going game by game, because uh, you know a lot of these games kind of shook out how you think they would based off of the standings, and the results did kind of go towards every single team that was probably favored. Um, so Toronto lost to New England, Miami beats ten or see <laughs> Nashville, um, Dallas loses to Colorado, which we kind of alluded to, uh, Luchi Gonzalez um, loses to the LA Galaxy and Greg Vanny. So Jordan, my question for you is there are uh, four seats that I consider very hot and there's some other ones that could get some honorable mentions here. Um, But Caleb Porter, Gary Smith with Nashville, Nico Estevez with Dallas, and Luchi Gonzalez with San Jose. I've got a question. Whose seat is hotter, do you think, out of those four? And maybe you could rank them or maybe they're all hot and you're like, well, I could see them all leaving. (laughs) I'll rank them. How about that? Let's do that. All right. So let's start. Which way do you want me to rank them? Let's rank least hot. Yeah. Most hot. Least hot to most hot. Yeah. And by the way, nobody clipped that to make it sound worse than it is. All right. So we'll go. Surprisingly, I got to go least hot Caleb Porter. I mean, I, I started thinking that like, okay, when's his seat? on the line, but really this is his first year and he inherited a mess with the whole uh, conundrum that, that revs were going through. But I, I could conceivably see that maybe at the end of the year, if things are not going well, they say, you know what? This didn't work. This didn't work. But I mean, the, the fact that they lost again this week was, uh, was, you know, absolutely uh, crazy on 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 how that's been going for the revolution. They they've just got nothing going, and they lose to Toronto. Toronto had been struggling for a little bit. That's saying something. I, I think that's saying something. So I, I go least hot though, uh, Porter, just because of length of service right now. Second most, the second least hot, I guess. Uh, I got to go with my man, Gary Smith. It is a rough season that they're having, but last year was still successful. They reached the League's Cup final. They were in the playoffs. I think he would have until next year. I do. Like, I think if this year they're like, oh, all right, let's see if what you can do next year. And then he might have like a little bit into next year to see how they do. But losing to Miami 3-1 last year would have been maybe more of an indictment before Messi came in. I mean, right now they're the hottest team in, in MLS when we're looking at points, right? That They have the most points along with LA Galaxy. Um, and you had Messi score a goal and like an assist. I mean, that's just uh, or two. What he had a goal, two assists, or two goals and assists, whatever. Messi scored, yeah, two goals and assists. Uh, that is hard to hard to beat. So Gary Smith though is on the hot seat. I'll say it's hotter than Porter, like I said, and I think it's much hotter than Porter at this point. I've seen a lot of Nashville fans kind of saying, "Hey, this might be it." They got seven points. Not great. Then I would go with Nico Estevez as 
second most hot. Uh, they are uh, 13th place Dallas, five points. Not great. They've had a lot of injuries, though. I can't really fault them for their injuries. They're having some struggles. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, they're able to sort it out. But I do think they've been a disappointment consistently. Last year, I thought they were going to make the leap. They didn't make the leap. So uh, I, I do think that it is getting hotter. Then I would have Luchi Gonzalez. San Jose is a mess every season. Really, no matter who the coach is. So you might think that doesn't make his seat hot. But at some point, they're going to have to just be like, bite the bullet and be like, we got to find somebody else again. Right? Like, I think it's more on the GM at this point and management and ownership. <clears throat> ownership. Look up their owner. See who that is consistent with. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think I have his at, as the hottest. He was kind of branded as coming in and doing something he was going to really make a difference for San Jose and he hasn't. So I, I do think that's a problem. Yeah. And if you don't know, Jordan is alluding to the fact that the owner owns the athletics, the soon to be Sacramento. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's too, which soon to be the Las Vegas athletics or whatever they do with that name. Yes. The um, Oakland athletics of Sacramento Vegas. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Right to John Joseph Fisher. Uh, yeah, I, I think Jordan, you're right. I think those are those are the way I have them. Um, I would say that the the three though they're extremely hot. Um, Nashville again, and and I I feel like I called this one in our predictions. I have them eighth. Uh, you have them seventh. We knew they weren't going to be as good, um, but I said I, I remember early on in their predictions. I said if they go down a Hani Mukhtar, he does not play well. Like this team is really bad really, really bad because their defense has not been as good. Um, and there they sit uh, just above a New England team, Jordan, that's been really bad. Um, and honestly, Caleb Porter and, and New England played pretty well in CONCACAP Champions Cup um, for their, you know, I mean, they got bashed in by Club <laughs> America. But but that being said, before Definition they got there. Definition of pretty well. <laughs> before, they, before they got there, they had played really well. They, they didn't they play had... big teams, though, before. That's true. I, like, it's, yeah, it's, that's true. it's tough to read that that's, sometimes. That's a good point. But, uh, yeah, no, I think, I mean, you look at this team um, as far as San Jose is concerned, and there's nothing exciting. It used to be really exciting to have Kate Cal there. <laughs> but anymore, it's – kind of like what do we do at this point who do we who do we root for like what can we get excited yeah. about nothing nothing <laughs> i could see this franchise up and moving like see they don't even have they don't even have a draw it's eight right. losses and a win yeah that's it it's terrible they don't have a draw or a draw they don't have anybody to come see yeah so <laughs> <laughs> It's unfortunate. They, they were really like, okay, th so the answer to last week's post, right, was I put a picture of somebody's uh, player history, and it was somebody I randomly thought of, and it was Steven Lenhart, San, San, uh, San Jose Quakes legend, uh, back when they were the Goonies team in 2012, scoring late goals constantly, making a great playoff run. They, they were so much fun that 2012 season and that era especially even after losing Wondolowski, it's like, like you said, who's there? Who are we watching? Um, they're just consistently not great. I, I will say they really did play well though, against the galaxy. It was a, it was a hard fought game uh, on, on Sunday night, right? Like this was a pretty interesting run that they were having here uh, it, it ate it by a red card for the galaxy, of course, but four one and they come back to four three and they were just really pushing for an equalizer. Couldn't get it done, but you shouldn't. I mean, they were, con they conceded two like within the first half, like before the half hour mark, you know, I, I'm, I was doing organizing in the spare room, got the TV on and I'm like looking up like, Oh my God. All right. One nil. All right, cool. Look back up. Oh my God, it's already 2 nil. Oh my God, it's already 3 nil. And then it's like 3 1. I was like, dang, this is a crazy, <laughs> crazy game. But the red card kind of shifted momentum a bit where they were able to kind of start coming back, but not enough. And they're just giving up too many goals. They don't ever score enough. 
it's rough. Uh, okay, how about before we get out of here, um, let's just quickly talk about these. Portland drew with Columbus 2-2. Pretty, pretty good result for Portland. Here they needed that. Orlando drew with Montreal 2-2. Now, at the beginning of the season, we were kind of impressed more by Montreal and how they were handling it. They're now down to 10th. They're only two points above Orlando at this point. You've had two draws with Montreal, though. Are you worried still at all about Orlando? Do you think they'll get it back on track enough to really factor into the playoff hunt here? I mean, like, again, everything's bunched up right now. They're They're all pretty close, but I just worry you know, not being able to take your opportunities against teams like Montreal might maybe come back and, and bite Orlando. Yeah. They got to stop giving up the early goal um, or late goal. Uh, it seems like the early goal, late goal situation. And, and that's usually just a sign of focus. Um, I think I'd say that for every team too, always, you always want middle goals. Yeah. You don't want goals, early baby. and late. <laughs> no, you do not. Um, honestly, like it, it feels, it feels like if you get for early goals or late goals, you're the teams that, are under the microscope and they're like, the hell you doing? yes, <laughs> like, come on, finish games. And Cruz got lucky um, last year. So, uh, no, I'm not too con- I actually think they're playing a lot better. Um, I've been pretty impressed with the way the attack looks, and that's huge. Facundo Torres has looked a lot better. Um, he's got Nicole now off the PK. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I'm really excited just to kind of see what, what they do. They've got a game in hand on a lot of teams up above them. Um, so, they, they could. They could catch some of them, but, it, you know, I, I think ultimately it's going to come down to can they stop just giving up the, the goals that they seem to lack focus on? Because I think their attack is going to figure itself out. They've got too many star players up there not to figure that out. I think it's ultimately can they stop making stupid mistakes? And they, again, made another one against Montreal. But a good point on the road. They were they were close to losing all of them. Uh it was 2-1 in like the 88th minute, so. Yeah. Um, great to see that they drew, they drew I guess. Uh, I mean, they could have lost, but yeah. On the road, get the win. NYCFC beat DC 2-0. That, that's a pretty big win for them. They're now climbing NYCFC up to eighth place, 11 points. Like I said, we got a lot of teams really bunched up here. We'll see how that shakes out as we go. Uh, so Houston lost, uh, to Austin, um, this weekend as well. LAFC drew with the Red Bulls to two and Charlotte, uh, lost at home to Minnesota three nil. That was another one that I was watching as I'm organizing and I'm like, it just felt like goals going in left and right. You're like, Oh my God, like Minnesota is just tearing it up which is what they needed because they had started off hot. They've kind of fallen a bit. Their offense was really on fire last night. Uh, They sit in fifth place with 14 points, eight games played. A lot of teams above them have nine played. They can, they can certainly get up there and be in those top three or top two uh, spots. So let me read the standings for you right now. Eastern conference. I'm going to read Miami, New York, Red Bull, Cincinnati, Columbus, Toronto, Philly, Atlanta, New York, Charlotte. That is your playoff teams. Montreal, D.C., Orlando, Chicago, Nashville, New England round out the Eastern Conference. Miami has 18 points. Red Bulls have 16. Since he had 15, Crew have 14. Toronto with 13. Philly with 13. Atlanta with 11. NYCFC with 11. Charlotte with 11. Montreal with 11. D.C. with 10. Orlando with 9. Chicago with 9. Nashville is seven, New England with four. But just seeing how bunched it up it is from Chicago with nine points, if they get one win, they can get all the way up to seventh. Like, it, it's really close so far in the Eastern Conference. Uh, and like I said, Philly has 13, but they have three games in hand of Miami, two games in hand of everybody else except for, like, Atlanta, Montreal, and Orlando, where they have one game in hand. Philly has played the least amount of games, in Major League Soccer. So depending on how those game in hands can go, they can jump all the way up to top of the East with 19 points if they win two games. 
Uh, and those two games coming up for them are uh, Salt Lake and uh, uh, Seattle. So we'll see how that shakes out for them. Over in the West, you have Galaxy, Vancouver, RSL, Colorado, Minnesota, Houston, LAFC, Austin, and St. Louis. End of playoffs. They have SKC, Portland, Seattle, Dallas, San Jose, Portland now. Again, only four points above Seattle after starting off the season pretty okay. Um, Not great. And they, they drew against the crew, who's pretty good. Now, the point difference in the West is a little bit different. We already kind of talked how Seattle, Dallas, and San Jose have six and under. But if you go up from 11th, you have Portland with 10, SKC with 11, St. Louis with 12, Austin with 12, LAFC with 12, Houston with 13, Minnesota with 14, and then in the top four, Colorado with 15, RSL with 15, Vancouver with 16, LA Galaxy with 18. I know we mentioned Vancouver top of the West. Uh, that was before the, we were writing these notes before Galaxy won, which then of course put Galaxy back on the top of the West. But Vancouver does have a game in hand where they can obviously get back to top of the West. Whew. Any Anything else about the conferences or their placements? Hmm. No, I think it, uh, that's a lot of 11s. My goodness. Uh, um, yeah. Again, Eastern Conference, highly contested, going to be a tough fight, going to be a dog fight. I feel like the Western Conference, you're going to start to see some separation with the way some of these teams yeah. are starting to play. Um, the Rapids are starting to play a lot better. Dude, our, our selling the Rapids, man, they, I wouldn't want to go up against them right now. Um, same with Vancouver. And honestly, I think right now that if I had to pick four teams that are playing the best, they're all in the Western Conference. Um, I think Vancouver, LA, uh, and then Rapids and RSL. Those are teams right now that are just a buzzsaw. Um, so wouldn't want to play them. We get to see RSL play. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so. you keep saying, you keep saying, I wouldn't want to play them. It's like, yeah. well, Union have to. Have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in it's in uh, Subaru and the Union. Honestly, they're probably the best team in the Eastern Conference as far as form is concerned. Right I'm now. the so. RSL jinx, too. So I you think are. you might be fine. Sure. I, I do warn <laughs> all of you in Sandy, Utah, that um, your RSL boys will come back and they're going to come come tumbling down the Western Conference because Jordan ruins teams. That's what all happened right, to Seattle. Yeah. They came and they were like, oh, the hell with this. They didn't get to play. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah we, I rained them out. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Tomorrow, April 23rd, we have Club America, Pachuca, and the Champions Cup at 10-15. Wednesday, we have Toronto versus Rovers in the Canadian Championship. And then Columbus, Monterey in the Champions Cup. Um, Saturday, Logan will be in town. We have Austin, LA, Galaxy at 145. Maybe we watch a little bit of that before we drive on up to Philly. We have Cincy, Colorado at 7.30, Columbus, Montreal, D.C., Seattle, New England, Miami, New York, Red Bull, Vancouver, NYCFC, Charlotte, Orlando, Toronto, Philly, Salt Lake, all of those at 7.30. Columbus, Montreal is free on Apple TV. So is Austin and L.A., which is also on Fox. Then at 8.30, we have Dallas, Houston, uh, Chicago, Atlanta. Minnesota, SKC, Nashville, San Jose. And then at 10.30, we have LA, FC, and Portland. No games on the Sunday. So there you have it. All right. I think that about wraps us up for this week. Logan will be in town. We'll be at the RSL game, so maybe we'll post some stuff. Who knows? Just keep. Just keep an eye. And if you want to keep an eye on us at Stateside Show on all of our social medias or email us at gmail.com if you vehemently disagree with what we have been saying. And uh, you can send us long form feedback there. Or if you want to call us out on Twitter, like I said, at Stateside Show, uh, you can like and subscribe to us here on the YouTube channel, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It helps more people find the show. Have a great rest of your week. We'll catch you next time here on the Stateside Soccer Show.